Hi everyone, welcome to today's Piece of Peace. Starting um, off uh, in my journaling again this morning with gratitude. Something that I find interesting is that the days that I have um, wake up with higher we're back to this monotonous kind of um, repetitive uh, functionality throughout the each day we're kind of doing the same things over and over and what are searching for purpose searching for um, you know just significant application to today and I sat with him just sort of when I take my focus away from okay what is today going to be about and how um, what am I going to manage today I I start to move back into this focus of gratitude instead of uh, how heavy things can be feeling, how um, monotonous things can be, how repetitive things can be. Um, she lifts up my eyes, lifts up my eyes and says, focus on your gratitude. So I start writing out everything that I am thankful for. And at first it was just like, I wrote mornings when everything is new. And then I got stuck there starting to go back into that thought pattern of monotonous day by day repetitive stuff and then brings me back there's a ton that you have to be thankful for janelle write it out just write it out you know you've been to third world countries where they have nothing and you have seen their joy and if they can have gratitude and you definitely have a lot to be thankful for so i start writing out everything the the incredible privileges i have and sat and changed my whole perspective on the morning. So that was very interesting. I just said, I can already feel my spirit lightening as I'm writing out things that I'm thankful for, having gratitude for. I can feel whatever it is, that angst that sits on us sometimes, that, um, that self-focus, that um, life is hard kind of, you know, and sometimes life is hard. But I, but when we're ruminating, when remembering and rehearsing, like Susie Larson talks about, you know, remember the goodness of God, remember his power, remember what he's done in your life and sit on that and, um, and don't ruminate or rehearse past pains or, or um, betrayals or sins or past. Don't ruminate. Don't repetitively play that over in your head. So as I'm not allowing not allowing as I draw my attention to God because I pretty much would allow myself to think about those things if I was you know trying to function on my own but he comes in and says focus on what I have focus on the beauty focus on what's good focus on your blessings and as I start writing this out I can absolutely feel like just shedding uh, those you know that heaviness and I said already Lord I sense my spirit lightning as I focus on what you want my hand to be put to, on the things that you've done. And I, I brought up a recollective memory of some of the most powerful times that he's moved um, in my life. And I've, I've partnered with God to, in the kingdom to, to do his will. Instead of inviting him into like, Lord, can you bless this thing I'm doing? It was mostly like, I am totally open. What do you want of me? And what are you moving in? And and those were the most powerful seasons of my life. Just focused on him, what he has my hand to, what he's doing for that day, that moment. And and I just put a prayer out and Lord, move me in those ways in the past, like you have in the past. And um, they were incredibly powerful encounters with him. I said, I want to move in what you're doing, not have you come alongside what I'm doing. I want to partner with my king. And um, I want to be a part of your powerful work. So he brings me into my um, devotion again, which is in Our Daily Bread. And download that app or order these booklets. Today we're reading in Kings 19, <clears throat> 1 through 9. So the backdrop on this is that Elijah is a prophet in... Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Elijah the prophet, he had just um, called on God's power to come down and wipe out the altar of Baal. 
So what was going on is that the Israelites were serving God and um, following his ways. And in the same breath, they were worshiping a false god, worshiping an idol, Baal. And Elijah called them to a charge and said, which of these um, gods are you going to serve? If, if the Lord is your God, then serve him. You know, so the, the, the priests of Baal were trying to get Baal to come and bring fire down on this altar that they had erected for him. And, and Elijah was calling on the one true Jehovah, the God of, the, is, uh, the God of Israel, to come and bring fire on that altar. And whoever's God brought the fire would be the God who was the true God. Well, at that point, all, the, all those that worshipped Baal had fall, fallen to ruin. And it was the altar of, of God that remained. But Elijah came back <clears throat> and Jezebel, who was the queen at the time, um, incredibly wicked woman, had said that if by the, let the gods deal with her, however so severe, if she didn't um, kill Elijah the way those prophets and those priests of Baal had died that day. So Elijah had a ton of fear. And that's where we pick up on what's going on in, in here. Stand with the truth that Jo that the God of Israel was the one true God. <clears throat> so we are reading in first Kings nineteen, one through nine. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make um, your life like the one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than any. I am no better than my ancestors. And then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank and and he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached um, Horeb in the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. Devotion was written by Amy Boucher, I think the letter, Amy Boucher Pye. She's titled it Strength for the Journey. So how many of us are needing strength right now for this journey? Perspective from God for this journey that continues um, day by day, moment by moment. One summer I faced what seemed an impossible task, a big writing project with a looming deadline. Having spent day after day on my own, endeavoring to work the words onto the page, I felt exhausted and discouraged. I wanted to give up. A wise friend asked me, when's the last time you felt refreshed? Maybe you need to allow yourself to rest and to enjoy a good meal. I knew immediately that she was right, and her advice made me think of Elijah and the terrifying message he received from Jezebel. Although, of course, my writing project wasn't anywhere near the cosmic scale of the prophet's experience, after Elijah triumphed over the false prophet at Mount Carmel, Jezebel sent word that she would capture and kill him, and he despaired, longing to die. But then he enjoyed a good sleep and was twice visited by an angel who gave him food to eat. After God renewed his physical strength, he was able to continue with his journey. When the journey is too much for us, we need we might need to rest and enjoy a healthy and satisfying meal. For when we are exhausted or hungry, we can easily we can easily succumb to disappointment or fear. But when God meets our physical needs with his with his resources as much as possible in the fallen world, we can take the next step in serving him. 
Just writes a prayer. Creator God, you formed us as your people. Thank you for your limitations. Thank you for our limitations, which remind us that you're God and we're not. Help us to serve you with gladness and joy. I take this back to my mindset this morning of just having this mundane grind going on. And it wasn't until I sat in his presence and thought about the things that he's done in my past and how he's provided and how the most powerful, most um, rewarding, um, the most purpose-filled times that I have felt have been having my hand be put to what he was doing. And then I was able to write out with gratitude all these blessings that he's bestowed. And that was just like a renewed strength of hope. Just thank you for renewed hope. And many, many of us might be needing renewed hope today. Strength from him. Refreshment from him to keep moving forward in and for his plans. I look at um, Jesus Calling by Sarah Young again. You can download that app or order her book. Her words um, from God, Come to me for all that you need. Come into my presence with thanksgiving, for thankfulness opens the door to my treasures. When you are thankful, you affirm the central truth that I am God. I am light in whom there is no darkness at all. The assurance that I am entirely good meets your basic need for security. Your life is not subject to the whims of a sin-stained deity. Relax in the knowledge that the one who controls your life is totally trustworthy. Come to me with confident expectation. There is nothing you need that I cannot provide. May you find his peace today, and there's our peace of peace. Blessings.